Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today I'm going to do my take on the astrology for December 2022. But before I get into that, I want to remind you that I did do my uh, 2023 year ahead for all signs, um, as well as pointing out some of the significant transits that will happen next year. I'll put the link here below. In December, we're also going to have uh, Jupiter ingressing back into Aries, and I've done a video on that too. <laughs> so I'll put that video uh, below in the text box as well for you. So when we start off December 2022, the second or third of December, uh, we have um, we have Neptune going a direct. So this is important. Um, ne Neptune covers a lot of things. Um, at its best, Neptune uh, really speaks to our spirituality. Um, it, it's compassion, um, that type of thing. Um, but it can also bring in a lot of confusion. Um, maybe even delusions. So I would say what's great about this Neptune going direct at the beginning of December is that a lot of things will start clearing up. I mean, literally, we may see the mist, you know, uh, open up as the sun comes on it and start revealing what's behind things. So I think that's an important thing that a lot of um, things that were not clear to us or maybe we've been waiting for things to be cleared or cleared up. Uh, this beginning of December starts that process. Now, it will take some time for um, Neptune, which will now go direct at 22 degrees of Pisces, to really get on full speed, right? If you look at an ephemeris, you'll see that Neptune stays at 22 degrees pretty well all of December and a little bit beyond too. So our first full moon will be in Gemini. So we don't have any, we don't have any eclipses this month. <laughs> um, but we got some significant moons that are happening. Um, I think most of this is pretty positive. But this full moon in Gemini is on the 7th of December um, at 16 uh, Gemini and one minute. It's at 8.08 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And of course, at all full moons, we know that the moon in one sign will have the sun in the opposite. So we have the sun at 16 degrees of Sagittarius. Now, what's interesting um, in terms of, I guess the word is volatility, we have a Mars retrograde going on and that's in Gemini too. Well, it's gonna be conjuncting this full moon. And of course, if it conjuncts the full moon, we know it opposes the sun. So I would say just this aspect alone can certainly bring in um, irritations. Now, they may not be long lasting. The moon itself moves relatively quickly. And we're really talking in terms of a direct influence, the moon uh, conjuncting with uh, a retrograde Mars, right? Um, so it might be a little bit of irritation going on. There might be people on the news, for instance, um, being irritated about this or that, or delivering irritating messages. That could happen as well. Just take care. You know, anything with Mars, you don't want to be doing uh, fast actions like driving fast or um, handling tools when you're under the influence, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, but what we have too here is two planets uh, that are conjunct, but they're, they're in different signs. And we have Venus in Sagittarius, and we have Mercury at one degree of Capricorn. And these two are conjunct. And I thought this was very nice. So this, compared to the irritation, that same day, um, Venus is going to provide some optimism because it's in Sagittarius. And Mercury is just going to be there to deliver the message. So it's kind of like um, there may be more than one message delivered with an element of optimism. Specifically, it might come from a woman or women, um, but it ties in with the future a little bit here too, right? Because when we look at Sagittarius, we um, there's many things it refers to, but I got the impression here that it's again referring to our future, some good news about our future, and hopefully individually we will have that as well, right? 
Now, this Mercury is going to be at one degrees of Capricorn. And remember that as I keep talking through and get on to the new moon, because the new moon in Capricorn in December is also going to be at one degree. Um, and it's going to be uh, at that new moon that something will probably get a chance to be new. So I guess watch what kind of optimistic messages come in. Messages specifically, say, from female about your future. Um, that could be important with regards to you making a new start with that information, that message, um, even that thought once we get into the new moon later on in the month, just before Christmas time. But certainly for Geminis, this is going to be a wrap up. And um, hopefully this will be a wrap up that's positive and helps you move forward in some way. I'll talk more about individual signs towards the end of this video. All right. So Jupiter now is going to ingress into Aries. Um, and that'll be on the 21st of December. That's at zero degrees of Aries. Now recall that we've already had a Jupiter and Aries in 2022, kind of during June and July of this year. So for anybody that has um, either planets or, or say their own Jupiter uh, in Aries, if you've got anything between zero degrees of Aries and eight degrees of Aries, you're going to get a third time that Jupiter will be conjuncting those. If it's in Aries, it'll be a conjunction. If it's in Libra, it'll be an opposition. Um, so this is positive. Uh, I see Jupiter in Aries, um, again, kind of reinforcing the messages of that full moon, a positive message about a new path forward in our future. Right? So the new path is all about Aries. The future is about Jupiter. But this also speaks to foreign people, foreign countries. And I really hope that some of this truly comes through for some foreign countries that are undergoing um, a lot of difficulty, right? But it's also about, say, those foreign countries or foreign people um, deciding to do it their way, right? So Aries is all about doing things my way. They want to be an individual. They don't want to have to account for other people necessarily. And they're not uh, afraid um, about taking action to move forward into their future. That's what that really speaks to. Now, Jupiter will be staying in Aries right through mid-May next year. Um, and as I mentioned, I've got a video on this below. I go into all the sun signs and ascendants. Um, the next day, we are going to have then the sun moving into Capricorn on the 22nd of December. So that's zero degrees of Capricorn. So then we start, um, certainly for the next uh, while or so, uh, we've got the sun in a more conservative sign, a more traditional sign, right? All right, we talked about the new moon. Now I'm going to give a little more details about it. So that new moon in Capricorn is on the 23rd of December. It's at 1 Capricorn, uh, 32 minutes, at 2.16 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, notably, this one degree will square um, a newly ingressed Jupiter in Aries. As I've mentioned in other videos, it's pretty hard to get a bad aspect with Jupiter, even squares. But I do see this as a potential... Um, challenge, not a roadblock, but a challenge for maybe some of those, uh, maybe foreign people, maybe us as individuals, may have some challenge they've got to overcome before they can push forward into that new path. Now, this may specifically uh, relate to Capricorns, of course, because this new moon is in Capricorn. And so this also heralds your new year, Capricorn. This is your whole new start a kickstart for your new year. So happy new year to all my Capricorn viewers. The other thing that goes along with this new moon in Capricorn is three planets will also be accompanying this new moon and sun. And that's Venus is going to be at 16 Capricorn. 
Mercury will be at 21 Capricorn, and we still have Pluto, <laughs> and that's at 27 Capricorn. So these are all loosely conjunct. And for me, I thought this, this really did say that um, there could be some very powerful news with regards to females. And in particular, we're talking about archaic ways. Now, we already know all this is going on anyway. But, you know, Capricorn refers to the old ways of doing things, its traditions. Um, it, it can be the, the old guard, that type of thing. It, it likes to do things the way we always did them. Well, this is kind of a big challenge here at the new moon because the new moon is asking us to do new things with those old things, those old traditions, those old rules and regulations. And the support for that newness is really emphasized by the Venus, Mercury, and Pluto, all in Capricorn too. Um, at the same time, that Venus will be trining Uranus. And so I felt this was like breakthrough, break free. Um, so there may be some real breakthroughs with regards to, I think, females. Um, and, and, you know, also our value system too, where we let go of this old way of valuing people, valuing things, even valuing our earth, right? Um, but with the Venus trine Uranus, there could be some unexpected things that come up. Um, regarding females, but it could also be that some new ideas come through with regards to our money systems. Now, this is a trine, this Venus trine, Uranus. So there may be some unusual um, happenings with regards to our money as well. And certainly if you've got anything around these degrees, you can have a more direct effect, right? Now, the new moon like any moon, moves on pretty quickly, right, through the day. And so that new moon, uh, probably around the next day, really, so we're talking about the 24th of December, Christmas Eve, um, that new moon will exactly conjunct Pluto. And so I think this might be a little more um, challenging with regards to Pluto, those people in power, and in Capricorn, those people in power uh, in ruling all our structures, etc., maybe even our banks, will come under um, an emotional appeal to change. Um, and it might even be, I'm getting this intuition, that we may hear some surprising news about how banks um, are going to do something new with regards to processing our money and keeping our money. <laughs> um, but this, this is a pretty powerful thing. If you've got um, anything, say, around 27 of Capricorn, you will have the new moon that's gone on the next day to, to conjunct that Pluto. So these are very deep feelings and um, deep emotions, that's for sure. Um, it can also stir up our psychological selves too, right? All right, so on the 28th of December, we have a lovely Venus sextile Neptune. Now, we do get this different times through the year, um, so it's not like we just have it once in the year. But for me, as we you know get towards the end uh, of our calendar year of 2022, I think this provides um, some real inspiration. And it's almost like I, I get this vision of... Um, stars in the sky almost. So, I mean, Venus is a star in the sky. And Venus providing opportunities to be inspired. So as we roll into the next year, we can feel inspired that things are going to turn out. We're going to be getting opportunities. And certainly for those that are looking for developing their spirituality, um, we've got that Neptune course that, that's pulsating away, right? Now, for others, especially if you've got something direct, say, around the 22-degree mark um, of either Capricorn or Pisces, this could bring in a soulmate of some sort or at least provide potential to connect with someone at a very, um, a very deep level of love, right? Where you maybe recognize um, 
yourself and another person and vice versa. Quite a special, um, a very special um, transit. So if you wanted to do something that was pleasant, inspiring and uh, full of love and compassion, the 28th of December might be a good time to do it. Um, on the 29th of December, <clears throat> we will have at 24 degrees of Capricorn, we will have the, our Mercury rather going retrograde. Now it will go direct on the 18th of January at eight degrees of Capricorn. And recall that just prior to the 18th of January, we will have that Mars and Gemini go direct. So these are going to be, I think, significant times to, you know, really be able to move forward when the Mars goes direct and then when um, Mercury goes direct as well. So if you've got anything around this, these degree points, 24 or 8 degrees of Capricorn, you may be more influenced by this um, retrograde. It really refers to, just like I mentioned with the new moon, um, Saturn, for instance, rules Capricorn. Um, so it's all about kind of maybe rewriting, rethinking some rules and regulations, um, just generally speaking in terms of an influence. That's what I would say about this. Um, but as always, um, signing contracts and things like that, you might, if you can hold off, it might be a good idea. It's not the end of the world. We still have to get on with our lives. It's only, I think, if you have the real exact degree points here, right? Now, as Mercury does go retrograde on the 29th of December, it is conjunct Venus. So we're looking at 23, 24 degrees of Capricorn. Um, and then, of course, we can say, by extension, that's not far off Pluto. So it also is going to be conjuncting Pluto a few days later. Um, the Venus will be. Mercury, of course, is going backward. But at this day, so again, we're kind of coming into that whole news about females, news about our value system, news about our money, right? And as I mentioned, this is around the 23, 24 degree um, uh, degree of uh, Capricorn. So to have real influence, you would have to actually have these degree points activated, right? But certainly when Venus on its own a few days later goes to conjunct Pluto, I think this is going to have Venus, women, literally being given back their power. And how appropriate is that? at the end of a year of women uh, fighting so hard for power that this could be potentially a time when they get to take their power back. And individually, you may be doing this too. Um, for others, gosh, Venus conjunct Pluto could also bring in big money, right? I mean, the Pluto part is, is big money. And of course, Venus could be money. All right, I'm going to leave that as my introduction. And next, I'm going to go on to do your sun signs and or ascendants. For Pisces, this uh, full moon in Gemini is in your fourth house. And then that puts the sun in your 10th house. So this axis is the, the home versus the career. So there may be something that comes to light for some Pisces with regards to something in their home and or their career. So it can flip flop either way. For some folks, it might be that for whatever reason, you decide you've got to leave your home, change your home, and this is directly affecting your career. For others, the career is affecting the fact that you can't stay in your home anymore, that you may have to move to a different city or a different state and maybe even a different country. Um, I would say that that's probably the general idea with this full moon for Pisces, um, but it can bring some conclusion, uh, certainly for others in the, ho the house of home. 
Um, the mother may be involved in this as well, um, including the family. The fourth house represents that, but the fourth house also rules your habits, Pisces. Um, so it could be that some Pisces decide that some of the habits they've been carrying around since childhood aren't working. And you make a concerted effort to change those habits, right? The new moon in Capricorn is in your 11th house, Pisces, and it's sextiles, Pisces. So the 11th house, generally speaking, we talk about um, friends, the groups we belong to, that type of thing. It's also the money you earn from the business that you have. Um, not corporate um, business, but your own business. So sextiles are all about, um, you know, opportunities. So I would say for some Pisces, look out for new opportunities to make friends. Look out for new opportunities to actually join groups that you want to join. Mm -hmm. Now, you are still hosting Neptune uh, in your sign, Pisces, but of course, Neptune went or is going, depending when you're listening to this, uh, direct early on in December. Well, that favors you because, of course, Neptune rules your sign, Pisces. So to have the ruler... Um, of your sign going direct now in this month of December is very positive. So again, if you have been confused about something or haven't got clear information about something, this month should see some kind of clearing up. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I really saw this like as mist uh, being um, sort of dissolved by the sun going on it, right? so that you can clearly see the picture uh, in front of you. Take care, Pisces. All right, so that's, that's my wrap up for, I guess, this year. And um, I'm wishing everyone just a happy holiday season, whatever you do, uh, whatever is important to you. Friends and family are always important. Um, and enjoying yourself during this month of December, I think, is it should be right at the foremost of everyone's mind, no matter what sign you are. We've had a couple of years where we've not been able to be with loved ones, friends and family. Really put the effort this, this holiday season to make those connections, right? I'm wishing everyone lots of luck, lots of benefits and lots of happiness. Take care and we'll talk to you next year.